Okay, I think we are ready, ready to go. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, uh, Sino-Dutch Collaboration in the Dutch Offshore Wind Market. Uh, my name is Arjen Schutten and I am the Managing Director of Holland Home of Wind Energy. And today I will be your moderator. Before I introduce the agenda uh, to you and the presenters, I would like to cover a few housekeeping rules. Please mute your microphone and this session will be simultaneously translated. Please click at the bottom below if you would listen to the Chinese translation. If you want to ask a question during the webinar, please use the chat window in your screen. States clear you to who you have the question and some of the question will already be addressed online and some questions, uh, questions will be touched upon uh, during the Q&A session. So also to the presenters, I would like to say monitor uh, the chat window closely and do not hesitate to answer a question online. Questions that uh, are not going to be discussed in this webinar will be answered by email in a later time. The webinar will be recorded and will also made available for re review in a later stage. So also your colleagues can, um, if they are not able to watch this video today, they can uh, watch it in a later stage. Well, the purpose of today's webinar is to inform public and private stakeholders in China and in, especially in the Guangdong province about the offshore wind market uh, uh, and uh, the offshore wind market developments in the Netherlands and advice on which steps are necessary to become involved in the local offshore wind industry in the Netherlands. To this purpose, we have prepared uh, two pre-recorded talk shows. One session, the first session, is focused on the strength of the Dutch offshore wind sector. The second question is focused on the Dutch offshore wind system, on the Dutch offshore wind policy. How is it organized and how can Chinese companies be involved on the Dutch offshore wind market? After these two sessions, there's also room for questions and answers. Before we start with the two sessions, um, I, would ask, I would like to ask your attention, attention to the opening words of our Consul General of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Guangzhou, Michiel Bierkens. Right after his opening words, we will show you a short video about the offshore wind industry in the Netherlands. So, Michiel, the floor is yours. Dear panelists, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Good morning to our Dutch audience and xiao hao to our Chinese viewers. I'm very glad to be here today and address all of you in this opening speech of the Sino-Dutch Offshore Wind Cooperation webinar, which is organized by Holland Home of Wind Energy and our Consular General, together with the local partner, Guangdong Electric Power Design Institute. Why offshore wind energy? The Dutch government has set a clear target that by 2030, a minimum of 27% of all energy use in the Netherlands must come from renewable sources. The Netherlands also wants to achieve zero CO2 emissions from the energy supply by 2050. Offshore wind is an important form of renewable energy to meet these goals. It plays a vital role in the energy transition. The North Sea is a good place to install wind turbines because of its relatively shallow waters, its favorable wind climate, the good ports, and the amount of industrial energy consumers. The costs of offshore wind energy have fallen significantly in recent years since the Dutch government has reshaped its policy for offshore wind energy with its full control and information transparency. The potential economic opportunities from offshore wind farms are also considerable. A large domestic market gives the Dutch offshore wind sector the opportunity to develop expertise and therefore continue to build on its strong international position. 
Dutch companies already hold a market share of approximately 25% of the total European offshore wind energy market. To achieve such impressive track records, a lot of investment is needed in innovation that does, that does not just focus on the Dutch market. The Netherlands' strong maritime reputation, but also international climate agreements, are opening up opportunities in international markets. Regarded as one of the potential export markets for the Dutch offshore wind sector, China's offshore wind power has increased more than any other nation in the past two years. Guangdong, among all the Chinese provinces, has showed strong ambitions in developing its offshore wind industry and has reserved 46% of the total project pipeline of the whole country. Hence, the importance to develop the Dutch presence in the local Guangdong market. Our Consulate General has cooperated with Holland Home of Wind Energy and the Netherlands Enterprise Agency, RVO, to largely promote the Dutch offshore wind sector and to stimulate the Sino-Dutch collaboration in both China and the Netherlands. In the past, we organized trade missions, seminars, technical trainings and masterclasses. Meanwhile, we support individual companies to find potential partners and identify business opportunities at both sides. The COVID-19 pandemic, however, makes all these physical visits impossible. As a result, the Consulate General and Holland Home of Wind Energy have teamed up to organize two online webinar sessions. We have received the strong support from our close partners, Guangdong Electric Power Design Institute and RVO. And let me take this opportunity here to thank them very much for this. Without their great efforts, we would not have been able to have this event here today. I truly believe that the two webinars will be an important stepping stone for Dutch companies to gain a better understanding of the local market in Guangdong and for companies in China to learn more about the Dutch strengths and market potentials in the Netherlands. I wish you all a very interesting and fruitful day. Thank you very much. All around the world, countries are in transition, working to ensure their energy supplies come from cleaner, more sustainable sources. So are the Netherlands. During this transition, we discovered the enormous potential of offshore wind energy. Our key to success? An integrated approach. The Dutch have centuries of experience in offshore projects around the world. A large part of our country is below sea level, so we turned water into land created the Delta Works and are leaders in the offshore gas and oil industry. Now, Dutch public and private parties have teamed up to design, develop, build and maintain top quality wind farms. They realized there is more to building high quality wind farms at sea than just manufacturing wind turbines. It requires technical innovation across the whole supply chain. How does it work? Companies in the chain together constantly develop innovative solutions for offshore wind farms. The Dutch government de-risks investments in the farms and Tenet, the Dutch transmission system operator, takes care of the grid connection and transmission infrastructure. We innovate constantly to make offshore wind projects even more efficient and cost-effective than they are today. We are keen to share our knowledge and experience with others across the world, with countries that want to expand their horizons countries that want to secure a long-term sustainable supply of electricity and want to benefit from the economic impact of offshore wind energy, just as we have. Together, we can find the right solutions. Let's work together to utilize the full potential of offshore wind energy. Okay, well, uh, Michiel, thank you again for your nice opening words. Thank you for your strong support in, in making this, uh, this webinar uh, possible. Um, ladies and gentlemen, what you can learn from the last video is, um, is that the Dutch offshore wind uh, industry is based on three pillars. In-depth knowledge of, uh, of R&D institutes and, and companies practical experience and a very impressive track record worldwide. And third, uh, solid and long-time government policy. Well, let's now go to the first session. 
the strength of the Dutch offshore wind sector. This session has been pre-recorded on the 9th of December last year in the studio of the DOB Academy in Delft. The people in the studio are Mr. Jan Krein Mosselman um, from SPT Offshore, Mr. Piet Warnaar from Knowledge Institute TNO, and Mr. Hendrik Groos of the DOB Academy. We can start the pre-recorded talk session. Hello, China and the Netherlands. Welcome to this pre-recorded uh, talk show about the Dutch experience in offshore wind. My name is Arjen Schutten and I am the manager of uh, managing director of Holland Home of Wind Energy. And I'm your talk show uh, host today. And I'm today I'm joined by Mr. Uh, Piet Warner from TNO. Mr. Jan Krein uh, Mosselman from SPT Offshore and Hendrik Goos from DOB Academy. Hendrik, can you please introduce yourself? Yes, um, my name is Hendrik Goos. I work for DOB Academy in, uh, in Delft and we provide uh, offshore energy education for professionals. And I can illustrate this best by showing our movie. DOB Academy is a lively institute that provides and enhances knowledge sharing for offshore energy professionals. Our mission is to provide high quality offshore energy education that nurtures your fascination, inspires you during transition or change, and always keeps you one step ahead. Professionals from all over the world are welcomed in our historic building to be part of enriching courses and programs. The lectures are taught by highly educated and hands-on experienced teachers. We get you up to speed with our in-house produced serious games. With graphics, animations and every other possible visual made by our studio. Fresh lunches and bites prepared by an excellent kitchen staff. This is all facilitated by the team in our office that takes care of the program. No matter what you or your company is aiming for, we specialize in providing the in-depth knowledge you need. The world's leading companies have already embraced us as a cornerstone in their development plans. Join them today. DOB Academy. Empowering Engineering Excellence. Thank you. Um, today uh, we are going to discuss the strength of uh, the Dutch offshore wind uh, sector. Um, first, I want to ask some general uh, questions to, to you all. Um, it feels sometimes a bit awkward to, to pat yourself on the back, but in which areas uh, do you think the Dutch offshore wind sector really excels? Maybe Piet. Talking for ourselves, uh, as a research institute, we are already active in offshore in wind energy in general, but in offshore wind in particular, for over 40 years. And by doing that in an excellent way, we think we are top three, top four of the world leading institutes developing knowledge in, in offshore wind. And that has led, and that's also of course fed by a very large Dutch offshore wind industry, mainly acting first in wind turbines. All that has now disappeared, mainly towards Denmark but also in balance of plant building. Yes, and can you elaborate on that? What do you mean by balance of plants? Of course, the Dutch contracting sector, as a Delta country, we are a civil engineering country for a long time doing dredging works all over the world. And especially those dredging companies have developed onwards towards building structures at sea, building foundations, uh, lifting turbines, building ports, providing ports for uh, marshalling harbors for offshore wind. That's activities we do all over the world. Yes, I see. Yeah, the main installation, I think, of, uh, of wind farms, huh? Nimi? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and uh, Jan Krijn, uh, SPT Offshore, also involved in traditional oil and gas uh, uh, market. And from there you started uh, also entering the offshore wind market, yes? Yes. So yes. is that also an asset of, of Dutch companies that, 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 that a lot of these companies have their origin in the tra traditional oil and gas and from there they took the step to renewables? Yes, that's uh, indeed a, a lot of uh, companies uh, gained experience in this sector for, for many, many years um, and stepped into offshore wind 
I think the, the specific uh, differences between uh, oil and gas and offshore wind is because of the, the multiple repetitions of, of installations to be done is logistics. And I think also in, in logistics, we accelerate as a, as a Dutch industry in general. And if you compare um, oil and gas, uh, if you compare it to, to the wind power industry, are, are there big differences? Uh, if yes, there are. Ah. Yeah, well, like Jan Krijn says, uh, wind energy is a repetition of many. So you do many, many, many times the same thing. If you build a gigawatt wind farm, it's like 100 wind turbines. And every monopile is, is, is different, but ultimately the same wind turbine goes up, the same cable goes in, it's joined together, it's a repetition of the same, and there's a big, big focus on costing price, where the margins in oil and gas used to be a bit bigger, and of course that's a bit turbulent market. But in, in, in offshore wind, there's always a lot of pressure on cost. Yes. Levelized cost of energy is, is driving the business case. Yes. But yeah, but still, we're working in offshore environments. So I think that's the same. Uh, yes. Working with safety, uh, yes. competent yes. people. Um, but I think, like you said, the logistics. I think because we have a quite a big oil and gas industry in, in the Netherlands, the, the, the logistics are there. Um, so the ports are equipped to handle that. Yes. Yeah. And if, if you look specifically at, at, the, at, at the Chinese market, I think you, you have done um, already, uh, you, you have been in, in, in Guangzhou to give a course on, on offshore wind. Yes. Uh, the Academy, and when was it? That's correct, that was last year. Last uh, last year. Not myself, but uh, two of my colleagues uh, yes. have been there for, um, for a couple of days. And um, that was very successful and, uh, to see people there. And we hope to, um, to get back there again in the, in the near future. How do you see the added value, uh, looking at, at how advanced the, the, the Chinese offshore wind industry is already? Uh, and where do you see the added value of, of, of Dutch companies? Um, I think it's all about knowledge sharing. And just like Peter was saying, um, we are very good. Uh, we are an educational institute, so we, we really believe in, in the sharing of, of knowledge. Um, and that comes with the companies that are already working in, the, in that environment. So we work with guest lectures and we have our own knowledge and also we have our own turbine. So we can talk about uh, that experience from a hands-on uh, point of view. And that will definitely help uh, the Chinese uh, market as well. Okay. And, you know, we are very good at uh, offshore um, energy uh, education and I think that can help. It's, it's a different ball game when you think onshore or offshore. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I think we can deliver uh, more as, as only knowledge. I think we also can really deliver hardware, like uh, ore tools or uh, specific installation tools. Yeah. Yeah. The smarter tools. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. You are a very innovative um, company. Um, how were you introduced in, in China with SPT Offshore? Uh, yeah, it, 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 it was a graduate process. It, it started in, uh, in 2014 in the, with the Hong Kong MedMast. Um, but by, by uh, a, Ch a Chinese engineer who turned into a business developer, learn by step, we, we, we learned the market and, and there was uh, a specific uh, uh, projects uh, available for our, for our knowledge, suction pilot technology. So we came in touch with the clients and uh, they, they learned about our experience in, uh, in, in European wind farms uh, and uh, the capabilities of our technology um, and then how we could convince them uh, to make use of uh, our services. Yeah. So, but that also means that, that uh, the, from Chinese, they are also willing to, to, to uh, incorporate new technology on the market. Yes. It's not that they're only going for the mature technology. Yeah. But they, of course, uh, saw uh, a, a, a decent level of maturity from our European yeah. experience. And together with them, uh, we, we, we developed designs uh, for suction power foundations. Yeah. That was a joint effort. What you see is that yeah. most of the, the, the projects have been so far uh, uh, installed in the more shallow waters. But what, if, what does it mean for China? Maybe a question to you, uh, Jan Krijn, if they have to work further offshore. Do you think that they need smarter vessels uh, or...? Um, yes, of course, that there, there is uh, the way that the, the, the first foundations were built in relatively shallow water could, could be done on a, fi a, a quite easy uh, method. Um, yeah. and, uh, but now the, you see that they go into deeper waters and they need uh, more mature tools. 
they developed in part in themselves, but of course uh, we have from our history uh, quite a big lessons learned from, from installations and which things go wrong. So this is very important uh, knowledge we can, uh, we, we can export to China. Yeah. Also in operation and maintenance you do see that now Dutch shipbuilders, designers are involved in building the next generation operation maintenance in China. The, the, the playing field is going to change from near shore where actually wind turbine technicians almost live on the turbine yes. by, and achieving 100% availability because that's their target to further offshore how to maintain that. So the, the whole system is going to change and SOVs, will be, service operation vessels will be operated the coming five years in China and potentially Dutch shipbuilders can play a role there. Jan Geijn, what was the trigger for, for the Chinese to sign the contract with your company? In, 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 what's the, in the final analysis? Well, I, I think uh, really our track record. Also, uh, they, they tried to, to use the technology with, with local contractors, which not always went right. Yes. Um, and our equipment, uh, we, we have sp specific monitoring uh, uh, tools on our equipment, uh, first several sensors, which we control uh, the foundation installation. And that makes our equipment unique. And do you explore, uh, expect more projects to come? Yes, uh, next year we'll be, uh, we'll be very busy. We, we already plan to install 74 suction piles uh, foundations on the Fujian Shangla project. And uh, we're discussing uh, many more projects with uh, clients at the moment for next year. So it will be very, very busy. Oh, okay, okay. And, and uh, Piet, what kind of services uh, does T uh, TNO uh, bring on the Chinese market? We see mainly two streams of activities. China, of course, has many wind turbine manufacturers and we work with the top, top three, top five to work on aerodynamics, to work on control, to work on operation and maintenance. That, that's a big, big stream. So on the design side of the turbine. And the other side is indeed to bring our artificial intelligence project, products on uh, operation maintenance of offshore wind farms. Also uh, work with Chinese parties. We have done that with Goldwind. As an example, to integrate our dispatch tool to, to program the next three days what are you going to do? How many people do you have? How many vessels do you have? What's the expected weather forecast workability-wise, but also wind generation-wise? And then our artificial intelligence come with the best plan. We have integrated that into the Goldwind asset management tool, and they roll that out over their offshore wind farms going further offshore because they fear the lack of, of, uh, of engineers in the, in the nearby future. Okay. And then for us, the upside is that we can test our, uh, our software and get large numbers of operational data. And that again improves our knowledge to build the next generation tools. understand. What about the OB Academy? You already mentioned the course that you give in last year. Um, what kind of services could the OB offer to China? And uh, according to me, it makes no sense to bring Chinese uh, offshore wind experts to the Netherlands and, 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 and and uh, no. give courses here, but, but, but how do you see cooperation with China? Well, there's, there's a, a few options. Uh, one option is uh, that we go over there and, and teach them uh, what, we, what we know. Uh, and that could be uh, like a, an introductory course, but it could also be a course on more specific subjects. So like project development, but also uh, finance or foundations. Um, another thing that we, we do, uh, we do this in, in Japan, for instance, is where we have a teacher teacher program, where we come with, a, with our team and uh, we basically teach the teacher, um, so that the um, teachers in China can also actually learn from us how we uh, teach uh, the, their courses. And also another thing is, is that we can join together with an academy there um, and become part of, of their uh, team in, uh, in a way. Okay. Yeah. So I think there's quite a, a few um, uh, prospects also for us in, uh, in China. Okay, thanks. Um, let's talk about innovation. Um, uh, the Netherlands is, is, I think, we're a small country, but we are the prime example of a small open economy. And innovation is, is the key uh, to success for in, in the offshore wind uh, business for, for, for Dutch companies. Um, companies in the Netherlands are extremely, extremely competitive. SPT Offshore, how is, how is uh, innovation embedded in, 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 in your company? How much do you spend uh, in, uh, persons wise in, 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 in R&D? You also have your own tests 
uh, location, I, I believe. Yeah, we, we uh, of course uh, we have uh, R&D uh, activities in in our equipment, and that's indeed done on our test location. But we also have an R&D, R &D, a large focus on R&D focus uh, on the application of structure path technology. Um, um, the, 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 the products are changing, the world is changing, uh, which uh, we, we originated from oil and gas, uh, where we uh, provided several solutions. We moved into offshore wind, um, and, and there we moved from floating offshore wind. And those need all new features to suction piles, uh, the way you design it, the way you install them, and the way you, you can make them more economic uh, to compete with other technologies. So that's uh, a large focus from actually all the office staff. Uh, everybody can bring its innovations and uh, everybody is supposed to participate. It's, it's managed by a dedicated R&D manager, yes. but everybody is participating in uh, bringing our products forward. Okay. Can you also say a few words uh, on which kind of projects, uh, R&D projects, SPT is uh, involved in at the moment? Yeah, if we look at uh, fixed foundations, uh, we are at the moment looking uh, at two uh, developments. Uh, one is a, an alternative scale protection system, um, and uh, it's not required on all uh, suction power foundations, but it has to do with uh, the currents and, and the seabed uh, uh, composition. Um, but this system automatically unfolds when it uh, touches the seabed. So in, in, it gives an immediate protection and it uh, avoids the mobilization of uh, separate uh, rock installation vessels. Um, it will be a full-scale uh, um, application in the North Sea uh, this year in an oil and gas project. And the other example uh, where we focus upon on fixed foundation is the Tri-Suction tri Power Caisson Foundation. Um, the, the foundation itself is floated out because it has buoyancy and because of the buoyancy uh, you use less lifting capacity to put it on the seabed. And uh, it's have to be combined with, with other uh, developments in the Netherlands like, uh, like uh, slip or double slip joint uh, connection. So these are the two uh, examples of R&D for, for uh, fixed foundations and of course uh, we're also looking at uh, floating offshore wind uh, developments. Okay, thanks. Well. For you, innovation, uh, that's, that's your core business, yes? We spend almost 100% of our budget on innovation. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. TNO is, is, is a real knowledge broker also, you develop, uh, but we also reach out, of course, to, to the industry. Can you say a little bit more about that and also on, on the international cooperation? Yeah, research in the Netherlands is organized in a way that we have to collaborate with industry. If it's not in collaboration with industry, it's not deemed economically meaningful. So we always have to build consortia with industry to build upon each other's knowledge to develop new technology, which again, that industry can then use and export. And by doing that, we of course also learn ourselves and we also export knowledge to our, ourselves and bring that to wind turbine manufacturers, to wind farm owners. Uh, floating wind is a new topic on the radar and which is also very important for China, but also for Europe, which is the next generation. Yes. Because 80% of all the offshore seas will not be bottom fixed offshore wind. It will be floating. And many new technologies like suction buckets, anchoring, uh, gap power to X, uh, wind to hydrogen, all these topics will be on the radar then because we, we cannot afford to build thousands of kilometers of cables towards the, the ports and the load centers onshore. So that will change, that will definitely change. And also in China, transport distances are so large, China has the same problem. Having we, in the Netherlands, we think of 60, 70 gigawatts of offshore wind, potentially covering one third yes. of our space in the North Sea how to inject that stably, affordably into the energy system, that's one of the big topics that we have to come with answers, and innovation will, will cover that. Okay. that. That's the big challenges for the future. Yes. And, and how is that with, uh, with uh, you as a knowledge institute? Uh, uh, yeah. uh, how, what means innovation for you? Well, first off, we have a, a standard uh, like 45 minute lecture about innovation in uh, most of our courses. So we discussed it and... Uh, you, you give examples of, of innovations or how it is uh, all being organized in the Netherlands, innovation? Yeah, well, what we usually do is uh, we ask the, uh, the audience uh, what they would like to know a little bit more about. Yes. Uh, and that could be anything like a hammering technique or maybe a new way of in installing. Uh, something like this, and then we will explain uh, the innovation from there. 
Okay, then you can also have guest lectures for, from companies that that that, uh, that going to elaborate on yep. their specific innovations. Yeah, because we like to keep uh, very much up to date, so we ensure that all our lectures are up to date. And if we do not have the knowledge ourselves, we will ask a guest lecture. But usually we have a, a, an innovation um, session uh, at most of the courses where we discuss most of the innovations. And I must say, most of them are actually from, from the Netherlands. Okay. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, um, as you know, uh, our Chinese counterpart for, for, for this webinar is the Guangdong Electric Power Design Institute, GEDI. And um, they are going to organize a webinar in January focused on the opportunities for Dutch uh, offshore wind companies in, in, in Guangdong province. Um, as a final question to, to the three of you, um, do you have a specific uh, question to, to Gedi? In, 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 uh, what would you like to ask them? I know that GEDI is very much looking towards the energy system of China in the future, injecting large volumes of offshore wind, but also the other renewable sources and nuclear forces that, that generate energy in China. And I'd be very curious to, to see in which way that develops, how to inject hydrogen, how to do uh, seasonal storage. That would be uh, wildly interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Looking to you? Yeah, well, we hope to, to continue with them uh, with uh, the development of uh, suction projects in China and, and do project, uh, projects like the uh, Yangtze Shaba project. Yes, and do you have uh, some particular questions that, that you would like to... to well, uh, no, 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 not a specific question, but uh, the general trust and confidence in each other to con continue business. That's really great. And, and you, uh, you, Hendrik? Yeah, well, what I would like to know is how they... Um, are going to put the offshore energies and the renewable energies that's coming from offshore, how to put that into the grid uh, in, the, in that specific way. Because I do know there's quite a bit of reactive power coming uh, in, into place as well. So I was just wondering how they would deal with that. Energy mix on, on renewables. Exactly, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for, for this uh, interesting uh, conversation. Also like to thank uh, the Chinese uh, audience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what I a little bit missed in this uh, video was a proper introduction of, of, uh, of uh, SPT Offshore and TNO. Uh, we anticipated to have this in the video. So um, I would last to, uh, like to ask Mr. Jan Krein Mosselman uh, from SPT Offshore or maybe his Chinese uh, colleague Bao Zeng uh, to, to shortly introduce the technology, the, the suction bucket uh, Piles. Is that possible? Yes, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you. Um, is it better that it's done in Chinese? Then I will ask Paolo, But Yeah, maybe that, that's the most efficient way. If, 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 but you can also do it yourself uh, uh, because we have uh, simultaneous translation. Okay. Um, Speak right. slowly, maybe. Yeah, yeah. SPT Offshore, uh, SPT stands for Suction Pile Technology. So all our business is focused around Suction Pile. Uh, we, we design, uh, subcontract, and install uh, suction pile foundations. And a suction pile is a foundation which is installed without uh, any hammering or vibrations. It's pushed into the soil, uh, making use of the differential pressure in, in, the, in the water column. Um, because you don't have this vibration, you can install a foundation in one piece. Um, so that uh, reduces all uh, offshore um, complexity with uh, several lifts. So the, the complete foundation, uh, substructure and, and transition piece is lifted, is uh, prepared and, and totally committed at the fabrication yard and lifted in one piece or, or onto a transport barge or directly with the installation vessel to the offshore site um, and installed into the seabed. And this process is, is, is quite quick, uh, say in average, uh, uh, installations uh, can be done uh, within a day in the field um, and the vessel can return or go to the next uh, location. Um, just like I said, we, we do that over 20 years. We installed uh, around 600 uh, suction pile foundations worldwide. Um, in China last year, we did uh, three uh, wind turbine foundations for the Yangtze Shaba project. Um, and this year we will install over 70 foundations for the Fujian Shangla project. Um, yes, um, 
I hope this uh, covers a bit from the video. Yes, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much. And we will also, um, we can so, uh, send also the participants of this, uh, of this webinar a short video of, of your work. And that's also what we are going to present on Monday. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jan Gein. Uh, Piet, do you want to, uh, Piet Warner from TNO, do you want to add something? Because you were also not properly um, introduced during the, 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 the webinar. Uh, good afternoon to all in China. Uh, we are uh, a research institute, now TNO, and we step forward on the acts that, that until 2018 we were called ECN. And so we were active in, in research in renewable energy for over 40 years, and our division mainly focuses on offshore wind, and we are already working quite a lot, <coughs> collaborating with parties in China. We are very happy to continue that. Learn from each other, learn from China developments, and then introduce Dutch knowledge, and then grow better and, and make produce more renewable energy in a cheaper and affordable way. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Pete. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I learned um, that uh, there are some connection issues uh, in China. So um, the video quality is not good enough. Uh, I would like to say that the Consul General uh, here is, is working on it and the audience can uh, restart again uh, if they want. Um, let me uh, briefly say um, uh, a, a few words on on the first uh, on the on the first uh, uh, um, topic that we discussed. The main takeaways. I think that the unique selling points of the Dutch uh, offshore wind industry are related to to balance of plants. So, and the balance of plant consists of the remaining systems and components that are required to construct an offshore wind park, such as the foundations, uh, the cables, substation, and the fitting, all the components. Very strong in general in, in installation of, of uh, offshore wind farms. Like stated before, we have very strong R&D institutes like TNO, but also Marin, a technical university of, of Delft and Deltares that have already very close relationship with many uh, Chinese uh, companies. And uh, these uh, um, uh, relationships are truly beneficial for Chinese companies and the Dutch companies. So that's a real win-win uh, situation. And the Dutch, uh, as stated before, the Dutch economy is very open and not a protective uh, economy. That means that foreign companies have a level playing field at the Dutch uh, market and can compete with Dutch companies. And as such, Dutch companies have to be very innovative and put a lot of effort on research and development. And this makes the Dutch offshore wind industry quite resilient and strong. Well, now let's move to uh, the second session uh, that was also pre-recorded at the DOB Academy on uh, December the 9th. In this um, um, uh, webinar, uh, we have uh, again, Piet Warnar from TNO, Mr. Henk van Elburg uh, uh, from uh, the Netherlands Enterprise Agency RVO. Mr. Henk van Elburg is from the Dutch government. And uh, Mr. Eric Arends from, um, from Pondera. He is um, uh, one of the directors of, um, of, of Pondera. And we have a talk show on uh, and a discussion on how the Dutch offshore wind uh, industry is, is organized and what are the opportunities for Chinese companies. Let's start with the uh, video now. Today I'm also joined by Mr. Uh, Piet Warner from, uh, from TNO, uh, Mr. Erik Arends from uh, Pondera, and Henk van Elburg of the Netherlands Enterprise Agency. Um, before we start uh, with this interview, I, I would like to say a few words on the offshore wind system uh, in the Netherlands. And the Energy Agreement for Sustainable Growth that was entered into force in 2013 has been a very important driver for the development for offshore wind parks in the Netherlands. Initially, the energy agreement announced an increase of offshore wind capacity 
uh, to roughly 4.5 uh, gigawatt in 2023 in order to meet the Dutch renewable energy targets of 16% in 2023. And since 2016, the Dutch government has been very, very active on tendering offshore wind projects in the Netherlands. And the tender uh, for Holland's Coast West, you can show it here on, on the sheet, this will be uh, the sixth competitive auction to reach the commitment of the Dutch government to deploy even 11 gigawatts of offshore wind capacity by 2030. And publication of this tender is expected to be in, um, in the, the third quarter of 2021. Uh, the offshore wind tender process is strictly controlled by the Dutch government. The Dutch government uh, is setting the parameters for the pace at which the proposed new capacity will be developed. Also the maximum capacity of the offshore wind uh, farms and the planning and the zoning and even the grid connection. Very important to, to, to mention is that the Dutch offshore wind uh, tenders are open to any developer in the world and foreign developers like for instance the Danish Ørsted and Swedish Vattenfall, they have shown that it's not impossible to beat Dutch developers like uh, Shell and Eneco. In this talk show uh, we will discuss the minimum requirements for Chinese uh, developers for participating in the offshore wind uh, tenders. We will also give some advice to Chinese companies how to proceed if they're really interested in uh, developing offshore wind projects. And last but not least, we would also like to inform Chinese companies where the com uh, op opportunities exist for uh, Sino-Dutch cooperation in offshore wind. Um, well, let's start with, uh, uh, with the interview. Uh, I would like to start with you, Henk. Um, can you please introduce the Netherlands Enterprise Agency RVO to us? Um, and which role is RVO playing uh, with regard to offshore wind in the Netherlands? Okay, yes, thank you, Arjen, and thank you also for inviting me to this uh, very interesting uh, seminar. As you already uh, mentioned, my name is Henk van Elburg. I work for the Netherlands Enterprise Agency, and together with the uh, TSO, uh, National Transition System Operator, uh, tenet and uh, the Agency for Public Works and uh, Water Management, we facilitate the rollout of offshore wind in the Netherlands. And we do that under the responsibility of the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Climate uh, Policy. Um, the role of RVO in this field is uh, that we uh, facilitate the rollout of the offshore wind farms uh, by organizing the tenders and the communication uh, around the tenders. What we also do is we make sure that uh, we provide all the relevant site data for the project developers so they can compete uh, in, in the tenders. They all have the same information which is very high quality uh, information and last but not least we also take part in the international dissemination of the experiences uh, that we have in the Netherlands. And that is last point is my main responsibility. Thank you, Henk. Eric, can you please introduce uh, Pondura to us? Yes, of course, thank you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to present my, uh, my company and myself. Um, Pondera is a um, company that is a consultant, engineer and investor, developer of, uh, of uh, do, uh, renewable energy projects. And then we are talking about solar and geothermal, but especially wind energy projects. And so there's a focus on, uh, on offshore wind energy. Um, we, uh, we operate globally. Um, our base is in, is in the Netherlands. And uh, we have offices in Indonesia, in uh, South Korea. And we hope to open uh, next year in Vietnam an office. We are a medium-sized group of companies of uh, about 70 employees. And we operate since 2007. And I'm managing partner and director at, uh, at Pondera. We have diverse uh, clients and partners in projects, from uh, governments to manufacturers, developers, of course, utilities, uh, grid operators, and so on. Um, and what we can deliver are services in any phase of, an, of a project. And this turning wheel reflects the, the cycle of a project, where a project goes through from the very first start of site layouts and feasibility studies, 
designing the, uh, the offshore wind farm, to permits and environmental impact uh, assessments, wind resource assessment, contract management, and in the end, construction and uh, O&M strategies. And we are especially strong in the first phases of, uh, of projects, so the, the, the real development uh, process, and also uh, uh, in, the, in the contracting phase, actually. Um, I would like to give uh, three examples to conclude my presentation of projects we have been uh, executing. Uh, one is uh, the wind farm Friesland. It is a uh, near shore in lake actually project in the, in the Netherlands. It's 380 megawatts and it is a situation of very shallow waters, what is uh, also present in a lot of uh, Asian countries. So therefore I thought it might be an in interesting uh, project to, to show to you. Um, we have initiated this, uh, this wind farm uh, project and became later on the main consultant taking care of uh, EIAs and permits and, uh, and yield assessments for example. Uh, a second project example very relevant for, for this talk show is, uh, are the uh, offshore wind energy zones and sites of the Dutch government and the, the, the tender process of that. And we have been uh, uh, preparing and uh, helping Dutch government to prepare these uh, sites for the tenders. And um, we have been working on every uh, wind farm in the offshore wind farm in the Netherlands uh, up, to, up to now. And when this uh, preparation phase is, uh, is uh, done, we can also switch to the developer side and help developers in, uh, in coming forward with, an, uh, with a competing bid. And we succeeded in, uh, in winning the, the last tender for, uh, for Shell and, uh, and ECO and doing the tender management uh, for them. Uh, the last uh, project example is the GE Haliade X, the first 12 megawatt wind turbine, offshore wind turbine uh, uh, in the world and also the largest uh, wind turbine. And it is built on the Rotterdam Harbour area because it had to be certified and is much better accessible than uh, in an offshore situation, of course. Um, we did it together with uh, GE and SIF, uh, the monopile uh, uh, producer, manufacturer. Um, and I would like to show you a, a short uh, uh, time lapse of the construction of this uh, very uh, uh, huge uh, wind turbine. So maybe we can switch to this uh, short movie. Thank you, Eric, for your presentation. And then, uh, Pete, Pete Warner from TNO. Can you please um, introduce uh, TNO to us and especially focus on the services that you could offer to uh, Chinese companies that would like to uh, work on um, the Dutch offshore wind market? TNO, is, as I said, is the official Dutch research institute from the Netherlands, applied by law. And we provide many services towards more or less the same audience that also Eric provides to, but more in an early stage. So on developing the knowledge to build the wind turbine, to build the tools that uh, developers use to estimate the wind uh, production, the animal energy production, like you see here in AEP. We estimate the wind, we have many floating lidars that we validate on our uh, Licht Island Goeree uh, uh, estimate uh, measurement position. So in that way we contribute with technology in uh, estimating the wind resource, measuring the wind, in validating the instruments, making sure that the output of those measurements are really bankable, are really, really reliable. We have very, very, very advanced tools, quite unique in the world, to really calculate the wake effects of wind farms, which is quite advanced. We have modeling tools to simulate the offshore installation during the weather over different periods of the, of the year 
throughout the world. We can import any kind of weather into those tools and simulate China weather, we can simulate uh, India weather, Thailand weather, uh, Dutch North Sea weather. Typhoons. Typhoons, yes. And, and also we do the same on operation and maintenance. And we also see in China more and more that the O&M strategy is developing from brute forcing with many, many uh, laborers towards more sophisticated tools using offshore support vessels and then more smart strategies to drive the O&M cost down because cost obviously is a big point also in China. Yeah. And we, we do that as an independent uh, research institute. So we have our own opinion, a scientific opinion based on, on scientific facts. And we have quite a number of uh, Mandarin specialists in the house in O&M, in aerodynamics, and, that, and that's necessary. Great, great, thank you. Uh, let's start with the discussion now, uh, after introducing its, its companies. Um, I think maybe it's, it's good, uh, today we're going to have this, this talk show about yes. opportunities for Dutch companies on, on the Dutch offshore wind market. But I think that um, the Dutch government is very transparent, very open yes. with regard to, to, yeah. to the Dutch uh, tender, uh, tender implementation. Yeah. Can you say a few words uh, on that? Of course, of course. Um, well, as you already mentioned, by order of the Ministry of Climate, uh, of uh, Economic Affairs and Climate uh, Policy, uh, we are responsible for executing the communication, the transparent communication with both the uh, in national and international businesses in the offshore wind sector, but also with the general public. So this is really important that, that we have two target groups. Uh, we use a several set of media uh, for this. Uh, first, to begin with, with, uh, with the internet, uh, we, uh, we use an, uh, an interactive uh, platform to, uh, to inform the business sector about the upcoming tenders. That's on the website of the Netherlands Enterprise Agency. And that's on the website of the Netherlands Enterprise Agency. Uh, we also inform everybody, national as well as international market players, about the state of affairs in the development of offshore wind in, in the Netherlands. We also provide the tender regulations and, uh, and procedures. And, that, and is, that is introduced by, by webinars in English? Yes, well, that is on the website. And, and last but not least, we also so uh, we also in, uh, provide all the site data information. So that is on a daily basis, day in, day out. Um, depending on the tenders that are, uh, are being presented in the Netherlands, yes. we also organize uh, specific seminars, ah. workshops, uh, to give additional information to those who are interested. And I can assure you that there are really a lot of uh, project developers interested, both national as well as international. Um, we also provide uh, newsletters every now and then to keep everybody updated on the latest state of affairs and the results of the tenders. Also Chinese companies can subscribe yes. to this newsletter and then they will be informed in English about the status of the new tender. Yes, exactly. So whatever moment you select to get acquainted with the Dutch offshore wind sector, it's always up to date the information. And last but not least, what I want to stress is that we also have a responsibility to inform the Dutch audience, the Dutch, the Dutch general public, about the, the offshore wind uh, plans and, and the developments. Because we feel it's also important that the public, we need public support to further develop these, these, these major plans, which cost a lot of money, of course, and take a lot of uh, effort for, uh, for, uh, for everybody to, uh, to realize. Okay, okay. Uh, maybe it's good uh, also to say a few words on the new tender system in the Netherlands, because if uh, the old tender system, um, uh, if you compare it to the new uh, tender system, there are a lot of changes uh, for the developers. Ever can you say a, a few things on that? Yeah, <coughs> if you ref if you are. Um, I'm referring to the mis uh, the risk uh, mm -hmm. mitigation. Yeah, 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 I see. Yeah, in the past, a uh, developer had to, to develop its own site. He, to, he was in, uh, he had to, to, to draw up this uh, environmental impact assessment, for example. Yeah. He has to do all this due, due, uh, due uh, physical yeah. and, and geo uh, uh, tech uh, studies. And that costs a lot of money, of course. And in that phase, a developer was very uncertain about the outcome. Yeah. If he would, would get a permit for his, uh, for his site, and even if there was a uh, subsidy in the end for, for, for this Side. And the new system, the, the government takes over all these uh, 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 all these efforts and comes forward with the EIA, with uh, with the permit for the winner of the tender, with a subsidy, 
and with all the uh, studies that have to be uh, uh, executed to get a very clear picture of, of a site and being able to come up with a with an, uh, uh, very sharp and, and competitive bid. Yes, and there's also a specific role for the Dutch uh, TSO tenant in this, yes? Yes, the, the, the TSO tenant comes offshore with a high voltage station and that's nothing to, the, the developer is, is, does not have to take care of that. It's all in the hands of tenant. It's planned, it will be in, in time uh, delivered. If it's late, uh, the developer will, will be compensated uh, actually. So that's an, a lot easier than in case you have to develop also the, the, high voltage, the offshore high voltage station and the cable route and also the connection on the, on the national grid on land. Okay. That's all taken out of the hands of the, of the developers. Okay, thanks. And, yeah. and, and Piet, uh, there's now also experience eh, because um, the Dutch government, uh, they achieved uh, enormous cost reduction in offshore wind in the past uh, years. Um, uh, but also uh, what we see now is that the Dutch uh, tenders are being implemented with, with zero subsidy. What is, uh, are there already being uh, projects being uh, implemented, zero subsidy uh, uh, projects? And what do you foresee for the future? What, what, what is the experience of the developers on this? As you saw the, the roadmap of offshore wind a couple of slides back, uh, Hollandse Kust Zuid is the first tender that was uh, scored with zero subsidy, yes. which is now under preparation. It's not under construction yet. Okay. Vattenfall won that at zero subsidy. Borstel won too, had a, a subsidy price. Yes. And Borstel 3.4 had a subsidy price. Both uh, Borstel 1.2 is completed. Is, is online and running. That was won by Oost, Oostad. And Borstler 3.4 is under construction by Eneco uh, van Oort. And that's under construction and approaching the end. First okay. turbines are online, last turbine is installed. And that's approaching finish. Yeah, uh, what do you foresee? Uh, will this zero subsidy, do you think it also will be implemented in the future if we go further offshore? Because these projects are are uh, not that far away from the coast, but what, what will happen if, for instance, if we're going to implement projects further away from the coast? Yeah, I, I, it's not scientific fact because it's an estimate of the future, yeah. but uh, there is a study already and that, that shows that the business case for going further offshore will require some more cost. So potentially that could require some subsidy. Okay. But we have to wait and see. Huh? Well, yeah, so government, by the wing. Yeah, go government, yeah. China way. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe it's good to mention that uh, the Wind Energy at Sea Act, yeah. <laughs> as you can translate it from Dutch, is tr recently changed. And now the government has the option of uh, uh, the, a subsidy, an auction, or a, a qualitative uh, a criteria tender. So there, there are a lot of options. If, if subsidy is needed for further offshore wind farms, this, this op the, there is a possibility that the government will, will say, well, th there will be a certain amount of, uh, of subsidy again. But it's not something that we can anticipate on. I think the, the, yeah, the, the, the whole idea is that it will be subsidy free as well okay. in the future. Yeah. yeah thanks. Uh, Eric, uh, you don't have to guide us through whole uh, tender documents, of course, we don't have the time for that, but um, can you very briefly inform us on the minimum requirements for companies that would like to um, uh, participate, in, uh, participate in offshore wind tenders? You supported uh, the, the consortium Crosswind on this, yes? Yes, con consortium Crosswind indeed, and um, that was the last uh, tender. Um, it was won by uh, uh, Crosswind. Uh, we we're very, very happy about Shell that, of and course. Eneco. Shell and, oh, and, and Eneco were the, the, were the consortium partners. Um, yeah, the minimum requirements. I, I put a few uh, uh, some slides. Yeah, yes. put a few things on a, on a slide to to have a good overview. Um, well, one of the requirements is that, the, there, that there is enough uh, equity capital within the companies that are uh, uh, submitting an, uh, a tender bid. Uh, they should have 20% of the total investment cost for the wind farm in their annual accounts. So only the larger companies or a consortium of companies, that is also a possibility, uh, will be able to meet this uh, requirement, uh, of course. Uh, because we are talking about 700 megawatts or maybe even a gigawatt in, in one tender. 
And then you are talking about billions of euros, of course, for investment costs. Further on, there are some requirements about the, the actual bid. And that means that the wind farm has to be uh, of a certain size. Uh, well, between 693 megawatts and 760 megawatts. The wind turbines should be certified in time. Um, it should be operational uh, within five years after the permit becomes irrevocable. Uh, you should comply with the regulations of the wind farm site decision, that's the, the covering permit of the site. And there are some uh, mandatory appendices that you have to prepare. And there are 15 in total, and I will indeed not go through all, all of them, but s some are good to mention. I think you should come forward with a very uh, detailed description of, the, of what you are going to do, and who is going to build it, and where you are going to build it, and uh, etc., etc. A wind report by an independent uh, organization, um, like uh, TNO maybe, for example. We do that for parties, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you should come forward with operational calculations, so you, you, you have to show all the costs and all the revenues or, and also the return on investment of the project and it should be substantiated by facts and figures. A financing plan, how are you going to invest it? Do we have enough uh, uh, own capital and if capital comes from third parties, who are these and is it believable that they will uh, uh, invest in, in the wind farm? Another thing which is very important is that you have to show your, your knowledge and experience of building offshore. Uh, that's a very important element because the tenders are not only uh, looked at for the, for the price and the cost, etc., but also for the certainty that, they, that the wind farms will be built. So if you have a high score on uh, experience and, uh, and expertise of offshore wind, you will rank higher in the, in the bidding process. Experience is very important. Experience is very important because it's all about certainty. If the government starts with this tender process, they want to be certain that after five years there is a wind farm in operation. Failure is and not an option. Yeah. Failure is not an option. You have to pay if you fail. If you yeah. don't meet these requirements, you have to pay also a certain amount of money. But uh, I think that's, that's not the idea. Eh? The idea no. is that there will be a wind farm. Of course, of course. And of course, it, you have to be compliant to all the plans that you submit. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. If you come forward with a, with a splendid uh, plan, you have to do it also. And it will be uh, uh, looked after if you meet these, uh, your, your own plans. Um, well, there are some more things maybe uh, to, to mention. And that, uh, as we were discussing the risk, you have to come forward with a risk analysis and also with mitigation uh, measures to, to uh, mitigate these, uh, these risks. Um, that are not only a technical risk or weather uh, uh, windows or things like that, but also the risk that, for example, the, the price of electricity will go lower than you expected. Uh, is the wind farm then still op in operation? W what will happen then? How do you mitigate the situation? You have really uh, go in, into depth for, for that kind of, uh, of issues. Um, and what also is a minimum requirement is that you comply with the more general re regulations in, in the Netherlands. And that, that are regulations specifically for uh, uh, offshore operations and construction of wind farms. But for example, also regulations for shipping safety and uh, work, work safety in the Netherlands. Yeah. yeah, lots of stuff is of course in English, but also regulations are in Dutch only sometimes. Yeah. Yes, and the Dutch uh, version of the, of the text is, uh, is the binding version. So you should have some connection with, uh, with Dutch, I think, in the end. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, also, already touched upon the risk and the opportunities. Henk, uh, yeah. a few words on that. What, 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 um, what are the potential risks for, for, uh, for a, a developer when he uh, doesn't meet the criteria? Yes, okay, well, about the uh, possible risks, uh, has already been uh, said some, uh, a few things uh, by uh, uh, Eric. Um, what for us is important, that if a permit holder, as we call it in, in, in official language, uh, the, the project developer or the wind farm owner, so to say, is that we always take first a close look at the situation. What is the cause of the delay? And, and, and then we de depend on, and then we decide on the type of action we take. And that could be an, an administrative uh, action, that could be a penalty, or that could, in the end, even be revoking the permit. Um, I think the penalty payment is something that I should elaborate a bit on now, because this is also something that we do not decide 
before this, this situation occurs, but always first look at the situation and then decide of the, the financial payment to be made. So this is really important for uh, foreign project developers that it is always in consultation. And of course, we have this regulation and we have this agreement. And of course, if there's really something not right or you, you keep missing deadlines or whatever, then there is this penalty or even the revoking uh, the permit. That should be said for the, when the project developer uh, misses important deadlines. On the other hand, you can also see that if we, from our side, from the government side, and as you know, the grid operator, TENET, our national transmission system operator, has also responsibility to deliver on time, to deliver the grid connection and to deliver the substation ready made for the project developer. And also in that situation, if on our side, so to say, the TSO, fails to deliver on time, there is also a compensation scheme in place. So I think that is really important for project developers to know it's always two-way. And the level of financial compensation for a project developer if the grid uh, operator is not in time or faces other yes. difficulties is always depending on the missing revenues for the project developer and we uh, uh, we calculate that in terms of wind conditions during that period and of course the market price so here you have a kind of compensation such. scheme we place. have a compensation scheme in place for project developers as well thanks also during also during operations yeah. if, the, if the tenant line breaks there's also a compensation scheme yeah. in place yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah. because it, it runs like 20 25 years the start is nice but also during operation, it's, it's heavily depending on the export cable. I see, yes. Yeah. Uh, we're talking now about the risk, but there are also opportunities. What, uh, you can also make more money if you uh, start, can start sooner with implementation of the project. Uh, is it yeah, that's fair? true, uh, but th there should be a higher voltage uh, transformer station then to, to pick up your uh, and evac evacuate your, the power, of course. Uh, so but if you are. In that case, yeah. also tenant as a TSO. Uh, yeah, it should, should be there already with the high voltage station, of course. Uh, but if you manage to, to come forward with a, with a bid and you make it um, very clear that you will be earlier in construction, you get extra points for that. Yeah. So you you're, yeah. will be ranked uh, higher yeah. up. Um, that, that's that's, an, uh, yeah, that, that's an, uh, some, some part of the tender system and the criteria that are used for, for judging the, the bids. Okay. At zero price, then, then you come into a beauty contest. Yes. And the best, the party delivering best to the government then wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And being yeah. earlier online helps to win a bit. Yeah. yeah. And for for example, in the uh, Hollandse Kust West uh, uh, North yes. tender, the last tender, yes. there was also innovation asked for innovation. Yeah. If you could come forward with with innovation, uh, which enables the wind farm to produce uh, energy more in, in in a more stable way, um, you could also get, earn some more points for that, yes. and that will be. Uh, very good in the assessment. Okay. And, and, and is also a selection criteria in the network. It was added. Yeah, it was added. Uh, yes, and we don't, know, we don't know yet what will be the criteria exactly for the next tender, but we can, it will probably be in the same direction as for, uh, for this one. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, Pete, question to you. Um, um, what, for instance, if, um, if a Chinese developer uh, participates on, on this, this tender system in the Netherlands and they want to use also Chinese manufactured turbines, foundations or, or, or cables, are there any requirements with regard to the certification that Chinese companies should meet? Yes, the, the, there are of course the legal requirements and all the plans that Eric just showed, the, uh, all the documents that yes. showed. But of course also in order to attract shareholders and finance, the entire plan also has to be bankable to the outside world. And then some certificates are more credible, more bankable than other certificates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've now discussed the more formal um, requirements uh, the, uh, the, the, to meet the, the tender criteria. Uh, I think it's also good to touch upon the, the, the rather informal requirements. Uh, can you give some advice of if you were a Chinese developer, how you would proceed in, 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 in getting started? Um, uh, on the Dutch offshore wind market, um, uh, mm -hmm. maybe setting up a local office or teaming up with uh, with uh, with uh, 
uh, a Dutch developer or, yeah. or a yeah. Danish, Danish developer. Yeah. Uh, who can I give the f maybe, Eric? Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. yeah, I think what you said, uh, teaming up and in, in a consortium and maybe f at first taking maybe a somewhat smaller stake to, to see how everything goes in the Netherlands and what steps have to be taken and what, what the preparations are. But I think that would... The developers that are already doing that, I think, yes? On, in the, in yeah, Europe. The, there are in some Europe, yeah, definitely yeah. not in offshore wind in the Netherlands, but uh, across Europe you see uh, in Meerwind, Three Gorges, you see in Moray in the UK, you see Three Gorges, also onshore in the yeah. Netherlands, Chinese developers are active. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that these are mi uh, minority shares that they have? Uh, correct, yes? correct, okay. yes. Or in order to learn the total process yeah. and then be exposed to the national law of that country, yeah. So team, team, teaming up? Uh, uh, teaming up, I think, yeah, and, and local presence is, is very important, yes. uh, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for example, Mitsubishi from Japan has uh, taken part in, uh, in, uh, in some of the tenders uh, already. Mm -hmm. Also being, uh, having a small uh, stake in it and uh, looking very, very well at uh, how everything goes and what, what, what has to be prepared, etc. Yes. Yeah. And then, of course, also acquire the knowledge on legislation, financial climate in the Netherlands, and of course, the, 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 to acquire knowledge on the health and safety regulations. Eh? That's also corporate social, uh, corporate social responsibility issues in the Netherlands. These are quite high, I think. Yeah, you have to comply to the regulations, uh, yeah. otherwise the, the, the building, the construction will be stopped uh, in the end. Eh? And it's, then the risks are important. huge. Yeah. 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 Yeah, if you look at the, both uh, Pondera and TNO, um, uh, how hey, we also touched upon this already, but, but how could, for instance, uh, Pondera support a Chinese company? If, if, for instance, a Chinese developer is approaching you and they are interested in, in more information and maybe even uh, um, uh, starting uh, in the Netherlands. Yeah, we can guide them through the tender process and yes. uh, tell them out of our experience how you can maybe set up a, a good tender, a good bid. Uh, of course, you cannot be on uh, several uh, bidders at the same time. Yeah. Eh? You have to choose. So if we are free to, yeah. to do, we can uh, par uh, team up with a Chinese developer. Um, and it can be very interesting, I think. Uh, it's a very attractive market uh, because the wind speeds are, are very high. It, it's v there's a very certain uh, apply chain uh, uh, in, in the Netherlands eh, of, uh, of all kinds of services yes. that are needed to construct and yes. to develop your wind farm. So this, um, yeah, the circumstances are very, very positive, I think. Stable grid, stable market. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Stable political climate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, certainty that there will be a tender every every year, mm -hmm. so you can also say I, I take a look at the first tender and the next one I will uh, participate in. All these things are possible and they are very well uh, planned uh, ahead for five to ten years to come. Yeah, there's now a long-term planning yeah. from, from from the Dutch government and, and that offers a lot of security yeah. for the possible yeah. investors, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And With and a steady one portfolio, one two yeah. gigawatt per year yeah. on yeah. the construction, yes. Because yeah. that, that for 2030 in Europe, the, the, the target is, I think, 60 gigawatts of that they are going yeah. to implement. Yeah, the Dutch government is now preparing a third uh, 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 round already with, uh, with even higher ambitions and uh, expanding the number of, of wind farms. Okay. So, yeah. Um, Pete, if you look at the Dutch offshore wi uh, uh, wind uh, supply chain, then, then um, I think we can say uh, that we are the Dutch are quite good in balance of plants, everything related to the installation of the turbines, the foundations and the cables. However, in the wind turbine uh, manufacturing, the blade manufacturing and components, the supply chain is, is maybe a little bit uh, weaker develop, uh, developed. Do you see opportunities for Chinese companies, for Chinese uh, turbine manufacturers or blade manufacturers to, to start in the Netherlands maybe? Yeah, you see the Chinese wind turbine manufacturers really gearing up also beyond 10 megawatt. We see 11 megawatt Dongfang turbine, we see Mingyang gearing up, we see Goldwind gearing up. And typically, if uh, after a third or, or fourth round, Chinese developers organize their own consortium, yeah. potentially they can also bring their own turbines if they comply to all the regulations that we have to our type certificate and bankability. And yeah, they can also be elected for, for turbines. Oh, yeah. There is no exclusion. It's, it's an open market and if the plans are solid, they can build.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like uh, GE is building the Haliare in China, for example. Yeah. The same can happen uh, the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the important message, of course, uh, like the Dutch companies want to be active on the Chinese market, there are also a lot of opportunities for, um, for, for, for uh, Chinese companies on the European offshore wind uh, market. Yeah, it's, it's an open market, but we have depicted some of the loop of yeah, the, the, the hurdles that you have to jump yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, um, gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for your participation in this talk show. Yes. I really enjoyed it. And um, I would like uh, to thank uh, the Chinese audience for, uh, for listening to our webinar. And um, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Hey everybody, um, now we're coming to the, the Q&A session, but let me first say a few things, uh, a few um, uh, uh, takeaways, what, what we have learned, the main takeaways, what I have learned from, from, this, uh, from, from this session. First of all, is that the Dutch government has a very long commitment for offshore wind, and this makes it for investors a very, uh, for investors a very interesting market. Like stated, RVO is the leading agency for offshore wind in the Netherlands, and they are very uh, open uh, keeping all foreign and domestic uh, stakeholders informed about the offshore wind uh, uh, tenders. Every, the, most of the information is in, uh, is in English. Of course, if you, need, if you want to be active on the Dutch offshore wind market, then uh, you need uh, ample experience and a strong balance sheet. Um, um, and also quite Im important to mention is also what um, Eric Ahrens touched upon, is that the Wind Energy at Sea Act, uh, the, the Dutch uh, um, uh, policy has been changed recently. And there are three options for offshore wind deployment in the future in the Netherlands. And that is one, uh, still using subsidy second auction, uh, three qualitative criteria tender. But like um, Eric said, developers should not anticipate on receiving subsidy again in the future because the aim of the Dutch government is to continue, continue with a subsidy-free system. Like everybody has told, teaming up with Dutch companies is, is very important. That can be uh, with, uh, with uh, a developer like Shell, but also with uh, companies like uh, Pondera and, uh, and TNO. And last but not least, um, know the rules of, of the game of doing business in China, uh, of uh, doing business in the Netherlands. If we go to China, of course, we have to learn uh, the business culture in China, and be sure that you also um, have knowledge of the Dutch business culture. Having said that, we will always serve you Chinese meals because we know that you prefer Chinese food also in, in the Netherlands. Um, uh, we have a few questions to, 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 to uh, everybody. Um, and at the end of this Q&A, we have about 20 minutes, I would also uh, give... Um, we also would like to, to, to share a short video of SPT Offshore, because we didn't show, uh, show, that, to, uh, show that to you yet. But first, um, the, Piet Warnar, a uh, question uh, to you. There are some questions on the development of, of uh, green hydrogen in the Netherlands uh, in relation with offshore wind. Um, can you say a few things about uh, recent developments in the Netherlands on this topic? Yes, I can. Thank you, uh, Arjen. Uh, we are really preparing integrated hydrogen producing wind turbines right now. We get one on our test sites this quarter. We have been preparing that for quite a long time and that's now slowly going to be built. And uh, also offshore, we are really looking at integrating electrolysis into the wind turbine because it will reduce the transport uh, costs of the infield cables and potentially also the export cable. The other way, of course, is to export electricity to large platforms at sea or islands. That's, that's the other route that could be followed to produce large scale hydrogen there and then export it by pipes to the land side. So both routes are being contemplated and we think that will be operational by 2030. And that is, the, and, and then also we can inject 
into a large hydrogen backbone, which is already uh, present in Europe by means of natural gas pipes being converted for hydrogen. Yes, thank you, Pete. And you mentioned also the artificial, uh, artificial islands. Um, which country do you think will be first with the artificial islands? Will it be Denmark or uh, can you say something about that? Yeah, that will definitely be Den Denmark. Denmark already has uh, concrete plans to build, to, to use an existing island, Bornholm, as an energy plant. And there also are plans in Denmark to build one off offshore the west coast. Yes, and it may be also interesting for the uh, Chinese audience to learn that the Netherlands government has a memorandum of understanding uh, with Denmark on cooperation on energy tri uh, uh, transition. And also um, the, the artificial uh, islands are also covered in, within this with MOU. Um, maybe a question to you, uh, Eric. Um, 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 you have been very uh, successful in, in supporting Dutch developers uh, with winning uh, tenders. Do you already have um, um, experience in uh, assisting foreign developers on the, uh, on the, in the offshore wind uh, industry? Yeah. In, uh, in the Netherlands, you mean? No. Yes, yeah. Um, well, um, as, I, as I mentioned in the talk show uh, just before, um, uh, Mitsubishi has participated via Eneco, a Dutch uh, utility in, in the tender. So with regard to, to that tender, we have some, uh, some experience with uh, foreign developers, but not uh, a foreign developer that, is, uh, that has set up um, or for initiated a consortium. That would okay. be new yeah, yeah, okay. for us. Yeah. But um, uh, if you are going to support uh, a consortium, only you can bet on one consortium, of course. You cannot support. Yeah, yeah. it's because it's, it's a very competitive uh, tender. Uh, all the information should be, it, it's really confidential within the, uh, within the consortium, of course, um, because a an, an competitor could have some advantages if he, if he knows what the strategy is uh, in, a, in a consortium. Okay, okay, thank yeah. you. Um, maybe uh, Jan Krein, would it be possible for you to, to, to show um, a video of, uh, of your technology also to the audience? Yes, I will uh, sh share this video. Uh, please bear me a second. Is it is yeah. yeah? Can you all see the screen? Uh, yeah, we can see the screen. Okay. Yes, fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Why suction pile? Uh, this is significant reduction of washer installation time. Uh, here you see an image of the Aberdeen offshore wind farm, and here you see actually the uh, the installation process. Uh, uh, well, where you see the harmless to the environment. Um, below the suction piles on the seabed. And after self weight penetration, you start pumping out the water from the pile, and then the, the suction uh, pile uh, penetrates into the subsoil. This is an overview of our uh, yard and test facilities. Uh, this is a basin of about 10 meters uh, water depth, uh, where we test all pumps uh, be before they go uh, to our clients. Um, yeah, here's also new, uh, new developments of pump systems. We have an in-house design and uh, structural and uh, geotechnical department. So all our designs are integrated. This is an example of this uh, scout protection system, uh, which I showed before in animation. Brief overview of the Yangshi Shawa project and Fujian Shangla foundations. And uh, like I mentioned before, this was the, the first suction pile foundation uh, in China, the Hong Kong Metmast. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. 
So uh, it, it's really very interesting to see that that uh, that the Chinese uh, developers and contractors are so much interested in the most innovative uh, uh, technology uh, in the Netherlands. Um, I have one question again. I think uh, maybe you uh, can address this, uh, answer this question, uh, Pete. Um, do you know if there are any Chinese wind turbines and sea cable equipment uh, that are already certified for uh, for the Dutch market? Uh, you're muted. We use the standard uh, the DNV certificate, the project certificates. We use the standard IAC uh, type certificates for wind turbines. And of course, yeah, it, it always is an issue if, if the, the certification body is, as, is regarded as high by, by the shareholders and by the, the authorities. That, that could be some challenges. Yes. But, but that's the, 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 the certification system is the same throughout the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, then let's take a look. Let's take a look at the chat window. Um, I'm, I'm also looking at you, uh, Karen. How many? Can you please tell me how many minutes, minutes we have for um, um, for questions? Um, um, then I have. Let's take a look. Um, we still have 25 minutes, 25 minutes for well, Q&A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I have a question. How can Chinese installation contractors be involved in the Netherlands offshore wind projects? Or how can they get in touch with the local installation uh, contractor to start any type of cooperation? Is Holland Home of Wind Energy supporting this and connect Chinese uh, 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 parties with Dutch uh, parties. Uh, same appli applicable for large turbine manufacturers like um, 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 uh, 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 Goldwind, uh, Shanghai Electric, etc. Um, what I can say is the the role of Holland Home of Wind Energy, um, our core business, is to support. Dutch uh, companies on um, emerging offshore wind markets. So we are not, um, 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 we can of course support uh, foreign companies a little bit with entering the, uh, with the, entering the, the, the Dutch market, but that's not our core business. So what we normally will do is we will direct uh, Chinese companies um, um, and um, get them in touch with companies like Pondera or like TNO or with Shell. So uh, that role we um, uh, uh, will also uh, will always fulfill. And also we have um, the uh, in the Netherlands the Netherlands Foreign Investment Agency. This is a government body that also supports um, um, uh, foreign companies that like to enter the Dutch market. So um, yes and no to this question. We can support uh, Chinese companies in getting in touch with Dutch uh, companies, but there our role finishes. And um, yeah, our core business is supporting um, the, the, the Dutch companies on the, on, on, on the Chinese markets, of course. Um, then let's take a look if there is still a question. Um, the offshore wind project used to uh, used to signing a, a PPA or free market exchange. The ri the range of the energy price for the offshore wind farm. Land for project, lease or purchase? Oh, there's a lot of questions. Um, I think we have to address this question by 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 um, by email. Um, I see um, there's one question from China: Guangdong nu nuclear power. Uh, maybe to Eric. 
uh, they are very interested in GE's construction of the uh, of the big turbine test uh, 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 prototype in, in the, at the uh, um, at the second mass vlakte. Yeah, if you have a any uh, experience to share, uh, they will be um, uh, very uh, honored to, to to get in touch with you. Is there any news on 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 um, on the the, the testing of the GE um, uh, uh, turbine? Well, there is some news. The turbine is now uh, upgraded to 13 megawatts and is being certified for 30 megawatts. And that's, that's done by optimizing the, the, uh, the, the electricity in, uh, electronic and elect electric installation of the, of the wind turbine. So it's the, the, the rate of power is going up uh, already. Okay. So okay. 30 megawatt wind turbine now. Okay. And maybe um, I, I, took, uh, I looked at the questions of uh, China power. Yeah. And maybe it's, it's good to, to say some words about these. Uh, some, give some, some please, kind of please, answer. please do. Yeah. yeah. The, the question is, if uh, do you sign a PPA or is there an, a, a free market situation? Well, in the Netherlands, the, the electricity market is a free market. So there is no guarantee on the, on the electricity price. And that's an important element of um, of the risk you have to mitigate uh, in your tender in your tender bid. Uh, you have to make um, um, uh, 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 you have to come forward with a, with a with a very good ex explanation how you mitigate the risk of the electricity price going down uh, below certain levels. Um, and that is done normally by um, assigning a corporate PPA, a PPA with an uh, with a, a large uh, electricity consumer for a longer period of time. By that, you can ensure that you will have an, a certain fixed price for your electricity, the electricity you pr to produce. But it's not a guaranteed price by the government or something like that. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, then I see a question, um, how can Chinese design institutes uh, participate in the design of offshore wind power projects in the Netherlands? Um, who wants to answer this question? Uh, my, my, um, my answer would be for Chinese design institute um, to team up with a, a Dutch design institute. Um, I know, for instance, maybe also Jan Krein, you can say something about that. Um, did you work for your project in China? Did you also work together with uh, Chinese uh, design institutes? You're muted still. Yes. Um, uh, yes, we work in China closely together with Yong Fu Engineering um, on, on, the, on the Chinese uh, designs. Uh, I think for for the the Dutch uh, situation, of course, it's a quite global uh, European situation. So a lot of developers team up with uh, European design houses uh, from the very early start. Um, so I think that's a way to to connect to the, to the European market. Yes, and and uh, if Chinese companies are interested, we can also give a, a list of Dutch companies that are involved in the design. Maybe Pete, you don't want to say something on this too. Yeah, like, like Eric says, typically the main bidder of the consortium decides on the strategy for design. So typically the, the leading developers, the owners of the future owners of the wind farm, they decide on the team and who is going to design what. So also uh, owners of wind farms are interesting parties for Chinese design companies to be in contact with. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, maybe a question to, to you, Hendrik. Uh, Hendrik Groos from the DOB Academy is that uh, the Dutch government uh, organizes uh, every year uh, master classes um, for, for the Dutch system of offshore wind. And there they elaborate on uh, how the Dutch offshore wind system works. Um, um, uh, do you also have uh, in your DOB Academy, uh, do we have courses on, on this or is this uh, simply uh, the core business of the Dutch government? Just, just explaining how, how the system works and how um, companies can, par can, can participate on, on our market. Um, uh, 
good morning, Arya, and good, good afternoon, everybody else. Um, yes, we, we, we incorporate that into a specific course, uh, which goes on about um, how the government works. Um, and it's slightly incorporated in most of our introductory courses as well. Um, but we, we tend to focus uh, on uh, the country that we are in. So if, uh, for instance, uh, we are being asked for a course in China, then we try to incorporate the Chinese way of working. Okay, thanks. Um, there's a question. I don't know if you can say something about that. Um, uh, it's on the artificial islands, uh, Pete. Um, do you know how big these islands are? I know that one island that that the that the um, uh, the that Denmark is is developing is not uh, an artificial island, but uh, actually a, a natural island. But uh, do you know something about this? You're muted. Uh, Peter, you're you muted. Yes, I, I've already pointed to the website of the, the conglomerate that is working on these islands, which is a conglomerate of Dutch TenNet, uh, of the Danish EnergieNet, Germany is included in it, and all together, they, and Port of Rotterdam is also included in it, and all together they are designing the functions that should be on such an island. Yes. And we, we have been also in, involved in that, looking at, uh, can you also include combinations for installation? Can you provide shelter for installation vessels? Does it contribute? Then you need marshalling harbor facilities on that island, making it much bigger. Can you get an airport or a helipad on that island to fly in uh, O&M crews to have a basis for O&M vessels, to have a basis for jackups? So, and, but basically the island is for conversion of high voltage to uh, DC voltage. That is the main function that they are looking at to build these islands. So whatever is added on decides on the additional uh, size of the island. So I, I do not have a straightforward answer. It's yep. 40 kilometers by 40 kilometers. But typically, the base function is converters towards DC or uh, large scale electrolysis. And all the other functions that can be combined depend, really depends on the, uh, the location of the island in the North Sea. OK. Uh uh, thanks, Pete. I've also received an, um, a question on, on floating uh, wind. Um, uh, what are the critical water depths for floating foundations and fixed foundations? Um, um, can you say a little bit about that? And what are the approaches that could af af uh, effectively reduce the cost of floating wind power? So two questions. You ask me also? Uh, yes, pl Ryan? please, yes. Yeah. yeah, there is not a straightforward water depth. Now we already built bottom fixed foundations in water depths larger than 60 meters. Monopiles keep on growing, jackets keep on growing, but that is seemingly the starting point for a floating wind, 60 meters and beyond. I can imagine 10 years from now, if floating wind has gone through the learning curve, has improved, uh, achieved a lower cost level, then water depths will go down a little bit and potentially even jackets could be kicked out but because then floating wind can also enter maybe 50, 55 meters of water. So I think it's, it's quite dynamic. Now, uh, beyond 60 meters, bottom fixed foundations are quite expensive, too expensive, yep, yep. and floating could win that, get that battle. But yeah, floating is only beginning its journey in cost uh, cutting like, like bottom fixed wind has done. So it is still quite early. Yeah. What do you need to drive the cost down? Yeah, that, that is also two big options on that, is to have uh, sent localized uh, shipbuilders build floaters to, to drive cost down. The other alternative is to really build global big plants and to tow the flow and to build them centrally in large series and tow them out, tug them out to the to the installation site. And then whatever is the best solution, we don't know yet. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I think now huh, we, uh, we have come to the end of, of, of this webinar. Uh, there are still a few questions left, but I think that we can um, uh, touch upon these questions uh, by email. If you have any questions, you can also uh, reach out to us 
And maybe uh, best contact uh, is uh, Karen, Karen Han of uh, the Consulate General in, in Guangzhou. Um, uh, sorry that there were some, some, some uh, uh, technical problems during the webinar, uh, but um, uh, that is not within our hands. It's also due to, to uh, sometimes an unstable uh, network. In that case, you know, nothing beats the real thing of meeting each other uh, alive. But we appreciate your 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 feedback on this webinar. Um, so, if you still have questions, uh, please inform us. And uh, we can also, like to, uh, um, stated earlier, we can introduce you to Dutch companies, vice and vice versa. We can also. Um, uh, introduce Dutch companies to Chinese companies. Um, when this COVID-19 pandemic um, is defeated, and now we are really in the, midst, uh, in the midst of it because we have a lockdown in the Netherlands. But when this um, COVID-19 pandemic is defeated, we hope to visit the beautiful province of, of Guangdong uh, again with a trade mission. And um, we also would like to invite um, a trade a delegation from your province to the Netherlands. You're very welcome to, um, to, to the Netherlands. Um, this Monday, we're going to organize a webinar on the opportunities for uh, Dutch companies uh, on the Chinese market, and in particular, the uh, Guangdong market. Uh, market. Um, if Chinese companies are interested in this webinar too, please contact uh, Karen Han of the Consulate General uh, in, in Guangdong. And before I um, conclude this webinar, I would like to thank all the uh, presenters for their beautiful presentations. Uh, I would like to thank the Chinese audience for your part uh, participation and your, your patience. And um, especially, I would like to thank the Consulate General in Guangzhou, the Netherlands Enterprise Agency, RVO, and the Guangdong Electric Power and Design Institute for all uh, their assistance in organizing this, uh, this webinar. Uh, thank you very hard. Uh, thank you very uh, much for, for all your hard work and making this uh, webinar possible. Xie goodbye.